We're going to get and install our strut bumper and boot located behind our strut spring up on the strut shaft. Using our 19 millimeter socket, we're going to go ahead and remove our lug nuts. With the lug nuts removed, go ahead and remove your wheel, set it aside. Using an 18 millimeter socket, we're going to go ahead and remove the nut securing our sway bar end link to the strut. So the threaded shaft here is spinning with the nut, so we're gonna put a pair of pliers on the back side, hold that, and then we'll remove that nut. Using a 10 millimeter socket, remove the bolt here holding our brake flex hose to the strut. It is a nut and bolt application, so we're just gonna set that aside this bracket out. We're going to use our pick, go into this little bracket right here. I'm going to open this up so we can go ahead and get our ABS wire free. Once you open that up, go ahead and work that wire out. So that is separated like so. We want to go ahead and we want to remove the nuts on the two bolts, upper and lower bolts, that are securing our strut to the knuckle. We use our 22 millimeter socket. Let's go ahead and loosen these nuts. And our bolt is spinning here, so let's go ahead and put a wrench on the other side. Let's go ahead and loosen our lower. With the nuts removed, I'm just going to spin the bolt. I'm going to push on the other side. And just work these bolts out. You can put a little bit of pressure on the brake rotor here, loosening that knuckle. and rock that out. And what you want to pay attention to is as we're doing this, you can see the knuckle and the brakes pulling away. I went ahead and I grabbed myself a securing strap what I want to do is I want to go ahead and anchor this unit so that the knuckle doesn't pull out and cause an issue with our CV axle. Anchoring this strap to our lower control arm, going to wrap it around and I ended up getting another strap here. Now we can go ahead and remove this lower bolt. Underneath the hood, you're going to locate your strut tower area here. There's going to be three studs and there's going to be a nut and bolt in the middle. Do not touch the middle bolt. Use our 15 millimeter socket with our swivel. Get to this back nut. Remove that nut and remove this nut here. Now I want to be careful on the last one. This is the last nut securing the strut into place. So what I'm gonna do is as I loosen and remove this one here, I'm gonna reach around into the wheel well and grab the strut and support that so it doesn't fall out and hit me in the leg. This 
this point here, we can go ahead and want to move our hoses and lines out of the way. Going to position that strut and work that out and away from the vehicle. Now with our strut set up and our tool to go ahead and compress the spring and disassemble our strut, I want to go ahead and reassemble it in the same exact position it was obviously before I pull it apart. So I'm going to go ahead and mark things with a crayon. And we have a rubber boot or an insulator pad here. Now let's go ahead and start to compress the spring. With our spring compressed a little bit here, we're gonna go ahead and loosen and remove this nut here. When this nut is removed, the strut will drop out from the bottom. Go ahead and lower the strut out. With the strut removed, we can reach up, remove our components, and we can go ahead and remove our bellows boot. And before I pull out our, our bellows boot here, I'm gonna go ahead and mark this as well with the crayon here so this lines up with the spring. The reason why we're doing this here is our spring insulator is part of our bellows boot. Our replacement bellows is just the bellows, it's not the insulator. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to cut around the base of the insulator. We're going to insert this up into it and then we'll have our assembled component. I'm going to use a razor blade and I'm going to come down about two ribs down. I'm going to start with this. I'm going to go ahead and start running right around the inside of that rib. The reason why we're doing this is we want to keep this spring insulator here. That plays an important role. Clearly you see that our original one was torn, so that was useless. I'm going to go ahead and pre-assemble our bumper into our boot. I'm going to press this in just beyond. I'm going to go ahead and install this into our spring insulator that we had just trimmed. Give it a few turns, and then it'll pop right on in, creating a nice seal. Now we're gonna install this into our spring. Lower this down, lining up our yellow line with our spring. Let's feed our strut up and in. Just gonna push that strut shaft through that bumper. Now that we have our strut up in place, we're gonna line up our crayon marks here. Go ahead and get an upper bearing plate installed. Let's go ahead and pop that off. Line up the insulator, the bearing plate, put our bearing on. Now that we have our upper bearing plate installed, let's go ahead and make sure our crayon lines line up. down our bearing plate. At this point here, we can slowly release our spring. We want to make sure that our spring is in our isolated pad. With the tension release, we can go ahead and remove our strut from our tool. I'm gonna go ahead and feed our strut up and into place. I'm gonna line that up. 
I'm gonna rest it on the CV axle to hold it in place. I'm gonna grab one of the upper nuts to secure it on the top. I'm gonna go ahead and push the strut up and into place, feeding the studs up into the engine compartment. I'm gonna reach up and over the fender and get one of those nuts started. I have the ability to go ahead and get the other two started, so I'm gonna go ahead and do so. With all three nuts started on the top of the strut, I can go ahead and release holding it. I'm gonna go ahead and get our knuckle installed. Now I'm gonna use a jack here to go underneath our lower control arm. And I'm gonna use this here to raise up our whole knuckle and brake assembly so we can go ahead and get the strut to line up nice and easy. Get our upper bolt in. Install our lower bolt. At this point here, we can go ahead and lower our jack. Get the jack out of the way. It's gonna line up our sway bar end link. Get our nut installed. Install our ABS wire bracket and then our brake line. I'm going to put our bolt through. I'm going to put a nut on the other side and we'll go ahead and snug that down. At this point here, everything is stabilized. We can go ahead and remove our securing straps. Let's go ahead and tighten down these nuts here. Let's go ahead and snug down the upper nuts here. Once we have all three of these bottomed out and pretty snug, we'll go ahead and follow up with a torque. Let's go ahead and torque these down to 63 foot-pounds. Torque down our center nut to 52 foot pounds. We're going to torque down our strut to knuckle nuts here to 214 foot pounds. Do the same for the bottom. Go ahead and install your wheel. Let's get our lug nuts all started here. Once we get all of our lug nuts started, we're gonna go ahead and snug them down. Let's get and torque down our wheels to 76 foot pounds.
when only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.